In this video I want to pay some attention to the value from the emitter capacitor that's here in a grounded emitter transistor circuit. The value for this, from this capacitor is extremely important. With this potentiometer we set the transistor to its working point, also very important. It's here in my demo video. Um, with this potentiometer we can change the collector resistor, it's here. And with this potentiometer we can change the um, uh, amplification. That's very important. And the amplification relies on the uh, difference, the ratio between the collector resistor and the emitter resistor. That's uh, completely explained in other videos on my channel and in my books. But uh, the value from the emitter capacitor is also very important because it sets the frequency band where the whole circuit uh, works properly or works best. And of course that has also to do with the input capacitor here and the output capacitor. They also set the frequency band where the, uh, this circuit works properly, works at its best um, point. I want to demonstrate now what happens when we change the emitter capacitor. This is an emitter capacitor from 47 nanofarad. The input cap is however uh, 470 nanofarad and the output cap also and that means that we can uh, send through this uh, circuit a complete audio signal from 20 hertz, 20 hertz up to approximately 18 kilohertz or so. But the reason that uh, it doesn't amplify so properly in this range uh, has all to do with the value from the emitter capacitor. So I want to demonstrate now what happens when we change uh, the emitter capacitor from 47 nanofarad to 10 microfarad. So it's a very big order of magnitude. And it also has of course to do with the frequency that we want to send in into our amplifier. Now it's uh, 6000 Hertz and of course the amplification will also uh, rely on the frequency that we send into our grounded emitter circuit. It can be 10 Hertz, uh, 1000 Hertz, uh, 500,000 hertz or 1 megahertz and in a 1 megahertz situation the cap is low here and let's say 500 picofarad the output cap is low 500 picofarad and also this capacitor is low but this demonstration is about uh, 6000 hertz here you see on the scope the signal that I put in into this one transistor emitter circuit. Now I change the emitter resistor. And you can see that it doesn't amplify a lot. And the reason is that I use here only this capacitor 47 nanofarad. Now I switch with this switch to this capacitor here and that's 10 microfarad. And we're going to see what happens now when we change the amplification by changing the emitter resistor. You can see that it amplifies a lot. This all has to do with the property from the emitter capacitor, in this case 10 microfarad. We can even see that the amplification is so high that the sine wave changes into a square wave. 
go back now in the amplification and now I uh, change the input uh, signal to let's say very low value and when I change the amplification again by means of changing the emitter resistor with the 10 microfarad capacitor parallel to it you can see that the amplification is very substantial and of course um, this has to do with the input frequency so I can change now the input frequency to uh, let's say a low value this is approximately I have to look on the scope for one moment please um, approximately uh, 200 Hertz I change the uh, emitter resistor now and you can see that the, this also changes the amplification so the value from the emitter uh, capacitor is very important when you want to design a circuit it has to work on a certain frequency for frequencies between uh, 0 Hz and approximately 20 kHz 10 microfarad is a very good value also uh, regarding the input and the output capacitor on higher frequencies the input capacitor and the output capacitor and the emitter capacitor have to be lowered substantially. So let's say 47 nanofarad or 10 nanofarad for approximately 400 kilohertz. But this all can be experimented out with your scope, oscilloscope. You will always find out how a circuit works and how it works properly.